Shut up and sit down. Here in Sydney, still stuck in a perpetual lockdown, I thought I'd start off my list of bad haircuts by showing you all what no haircut looks like. And with little other to do, I figured I'd review Rear Admiral's Dave Oliver's book, Bronze Rules. His rules are bronze, as in his words, there is only one golden rule, never to betray your ethics or risk your integrity. Dave's book is entitled A Masterclass on Managing Risk and Leadership. He is a man with some 30 years experience in the US Navy and another 20 years of senior experience in both government and corporate leadership positions. A man who'd have more experience than you'd think possible. Originally, I wasn't totally sure what to expect. I was hoping to get a new perspective on the challenges of leadership from an angle I knew little about. However, Dave's book starts out with a sequence more reminiscent of an Ian Fleming's novel and I wasn't quite sure if his book was more about tales of an old salty. I was starting to remember stories of the mystical golden rivet, pleasure barrels that are only usable six days a week, and don't ask what happens on the seventh. But to my surprise, I found a very concise and cryptic rationale from someone who can remember all the way back to the beginnings of their career. As someone who has a corporate background, I found the book a little bit more difficult to read than I was expecting. The military is truly a different world from the one I exist in. Whilst the book is written in perfect English, it just seems that it had been written in a different language and translated back into English by Google Translate and required constant rereading to get the true meaning. You may think that a 212 page book can be read reasonably quickly, but Dave's book is very dense and if you read it without stopping and thinking, you'll miss most of it. I interpret these bronze rules as someone looking through the corporate background formed by working in the IT project environment, which is very different from the military in which they are created in. Large bureaucratic organisations are usually built on the scientific management style where people basically do the same well-defined job the same way that the person before them did. This is not IT or small business. I imagine a fellow military officer would likely understand Dave's rules far better than I am. For example, Dave opens his book with a metaphor about talking to his shadow. A more modern platitude from the corporate world in the same vein would have a state that we shouldn't let the fear take the will and steer. In this way we know if we're acting out of our better judgement or letting other factors control our choices. I don't think my example on this subject would be as exciting as Dave's who recites a story about being offered to purchase nuclear warheads after the fall of the Soviet Union. But I remember a more relatable experience when I was called in for a job interview. And when I got there, the office was down the end of a dark alleyway. I remember asking to myself, did I actually apply for this job? Or am I about to meet a grisly fate at the end of the alleyway? I personally learned not to believe in such gut feelings and look for evidence to discern which reality is in fact the truth. Reading through Dave's book, I realised just how different the military world is. There are procedures for almost everything military personnel do. The leadership is more about managing personalities rather than achieving any particular outcome. In the corporate world, a leader is a person who can read the invisible map, can look to her, the horizon and see valleys and traps, bridges and determine which is the correct path to get you there, and it's not always the straight line. A leader is a, in the corporate world needs to predict, plan and get their team to the other side. There is no list of procedures that you can rely upon to get you there. You need to determine them yourself. In my experience, the corporate world is full of individuals who all think they know the answer and will tell you whatever it is they think that you want to hear just to get you to hand over your hard-earned cash. Often it's a leader's ability to work with people to keep them together and to allow them to exceed the, uh, their individual abilities. It is a leader's ability to get their team to work as a system where the product of the whole is more than the sum of their parts. In a large bureaucracies, it is a world that is very pre-planned and there is a tendency for leaders to surround themselves with yes men and loyal canines. I would describe Dave's book as a very mature view of the problems likely to encounter when you manage large numbers of people. His comments about single car accidents in the middle of the night might be confronting to some readers. 
but I personally think that Dave takes to heart the poor outcomes of when such subordinates are pushed too hard. In my experience, the straw that breaks a camel's back is not always a responsible fact, but other questions like why are such subordinates don't feel able to reach out for help. In the corporate world, you work as a team or you play in the sandbox by yourself. I thank Dave for his book. It is an interesting read, even though it's more targeted at large bureaucratic organisations than the ones I am likely to be involved with. His insights allow me to look across and see how brown the grass is on the other side and to reinforce my own golden rule, never fear the truth. As when you are scared of what other people will do when they know the truth, then you know you're in the wrong.